Hey, Browns fans, it's time to gear up for a pain-free 2022 NFL season for your Cleveland Browns with new friends of the show, Buckeye Law Group. If you've been injured in a car accident, a slip and fall, a work accident, or even if you've been buried into the ground by Miles Garrett or stiff-armed by Nick Chubb, you need to call Buckeye Law Group today at 1-800-411-PAIN. Their attorneys will fight for the money you deserve. Buckeye Law Group's attorneys have recovered over $1 billion for their clients throughout the entire country. So don't make the mistake of calling just any other attorney. Call attorneys you can trust. And best of all, they're Browns fans just like you. Call our friends from Buckeye Law Group at 1-800-411-PAIN. After 911, call 411. That's 1-800-411-PAIN. 1-800-411-7246. That's Buckeye Law Group located at 1300 East 9th Street, Suite 1210 in Cleveland, Ohio. Buckeye Law Group, proud fans of the Cleveland Browns just like you. Hey, Dog Pack, Happy New Year's, and let's say that the first half was 2022 and the second half was 2023. Wow, things to come. Deshaun Watson, three touchdowns. Amari Cooper tearing it up on just three catches, four catches. Nick Chubb, 100 yards. The defense actually getting off the field. Well, let's kick this off, boys. Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Rineker, Justin Charles, John Nye, and Josh All. What's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Sports betting finally legal in Ohio. So yeah. If you haven't tried DraftKings yet and you've been waiting, now's the time. So make sure you jump on there and use our promo code uh, TPPN, correct? Yep, I haven't even used it because, you know, we couldn't use it yet. But if you're in Ohio and you want to gamble, uh, DraftKings.com's code TPPN, just don't, you know, throw your life away. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Be smart out there. Yes. Uh, If you want to get your intros on the show, head to the dogspodcast.com, tap leave voicemail on the drop down menu. Uh, We're looking for more intros all the time, so make sure you do that. Uh, If you, uh, we're going to get into the Browns. Uh, win against Washington, what it means for the rest of the season, what it means, you know, the second half was kind of what we've been looking to see how the offense, we want to get into all that, got a couple of voicemails to get to. Uh, before we do, though, I want to remind you guys to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Make sure you tap the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. If you prefer to just listen to the show, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, and Google. Lastly, if you're looking for more dogs content, head to jointhedogs.com. Become an official Dog Pack member on the Patreon page. Fantasy Leagues are wrapping up this week. Uh, we're going to be crowning five winners, which is pretty cool. So we're going to be giving away five pieces of merch, five pieces of uh, signed posters that are behind me. Um, so it's just a good time for everybody. You get an extra episode every week. Uh, access to the private discord everybody seems to like it so if you want more access to us you want to hang out with browns fans all over the world join the dogs.com become an official dog pack member so before we get into the episode we do want to talk about um this is monday for us or tuesday for us we're recording this episode on tuesday and last night we were watching that Bengals uh bills game and one of the scariest things I've ever seen on the uh, football field I've never seen anything like that we just wanted to take a minute to send our thoughts to DeMar Hamlin for the Bills. It was a super scary situation. Hopefully when you guys are uh, listening to this, we'll have some more information. Last we heard, he was still in critical condition. His uh, pulse was back. His heartbeat was back, but he was on a breathing tube and he was in intensive care. Uh, Got to shout out the medical professionals on the field. Like they, they hopefully saved that guy's life. I've been CPR certified for a long time, and your chances of making it, go down drastically every minute they don't have the AED on you. So like just CPR is, you know, that's worst case scenario. So the fact that if they were able to get the AED on really quick, they potentially save this guy's life. So shout out to all those guys. I also think we should shout out Cincinnati Bengals fans. It's been, they they were super classy the whole night. And then Cincinnati Bengals uh, team, Joe Burrow went to the locker room. Uh, Zach Taylor was, you know, talking to Sean McDermott. Um, there's rumors that the league wasn't going to stop the game and the Bengals and the Bills were like, no, we're not playing. So I guess the the Bengals probably could have held the Bills hostage a little bit if that's true. And they, you know, they came together and agreed not to play the game. Um, and I think one of the coolest things I've seen so far is that this guy has a charity, a foundation to, uh, he buys toys around Christmas time and stuff for kids. 
and the goal on the GoFundMe that he collects the money through is twenty five hundred dollars. And since he got hurt last night, it's over three million. Wow, that, that's so. Really? The, there's a lot of good people in the world. Turn off the news and just like go talk to some people, and you'll see that. So uh, we just wanted to send our thoughts out to him, uh, to all the Bills players, uh, Demar's family, his friends. Um, it's just a tough watch. So hopefully we get some good news on that by the time you guys are hearing this tomorrow. Uh, before we jump into the episode, we're just going to take a quick break, and uh, and we'll be right back to talk about the Browns. This episode of the Dogs Podcast is brought to you by Built Bar. Come on now, everybody. We've all had those protein bars that are chalky and just nasty, and as soon as you take a bite, you're like, do I really got to finish this thing? Built Bar is the world's first ever candy bar protein bar this is a protein bar but man you swear you're eating a candy bar to give you guys a good idea it's kind of the consistency of a three musketeers bar and they have so many delicious flavors i mean you bite into this thing you don't think you're eating a protein bar you don't think you're eating something that's healthy for you You think you're eating a good old junk food snack food candy bar baby these things are awesome order yourself a box of built bar try all their different flavors or just try the ones you love whatever you want to do these things are perfect fill your cabinet you will not regret giving Built Bar a try. And right now, if you go to Built.com, use promo code BARK, B-A-R-K, when you check out, get 10% off your order when you order today with code BARK at Built.com. All right, welcome back. So now we're going to jump into some Cleveland sports stuff, you know, which is what we're all here for. Before we get to the Browns, which I know we're all dying to do, is the best half the offenses look. I think it would be, um, it would behoove us to mention <laughs> arguably the greatest Cavs performance of all time happened last night. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a shame. One of the saddest things I've ever watched happened. And then 20 minutes later, one of the craziest Cleveland things I've ever seen happen. Donovan Mitchell scores 71 points, almost a 71 point triple double. Yeah. He almost was two, uh, I think was two assists re- away or assists. two rebounds away from a triple double. It's 71, eight and 10 and also a block. <laughs> and it, not only that, it was in a win in which he missed the second free throw on purpose, got his own rebound, and scored as time was expiring to send it to overtime. Yep. And then in overtime, just did not miss. He was just like chucking the ball over his shoulders. I mean, <laughs> it was it was insane. I never – we had LeBron James, and I never seen anything like this. No, I mean, the, the can't miss thing is when LeBron played Detroit, and what was it, like game five back in 2007 exactly. or something like yeah. that. and. I, you didn't miss in overtime, and, and you put up 25 or something in that, that uh, quarter. But. I mean, there's some games that had some bigger impacts in terms of, like, uh, when him and Kyrie both scored 40-plus yep. in, in the playoffs. Yep. You know, LeBron's performance against Detroit to send us to the finals in mm-hmm. 07. But just in terms of individual performance, 71 points. That's it. amazing. He he scored – I think I, I saw he scored or assisted on 99 – points it's like the most in nba history or something and uh, second most second most because i guess will scored 100 yeah. um yep. so just one of the craziest craziest games he, he's been worth every bit that we give away to trade for him yeah for every sure. bit so awesome for donovan mitchell uh obviously this is a browns podcast but we love all things cleveland and columbus yep. so we had to mention donovan mitchell i mean 71 points that doesn't happen so for that's the most points scored since uh, Kobe scored eighty one. Was it eighty one or eighty two? I thought it was eighty one. Eighty one. I thought it's the most points. Now Luke has been out there like flirting with it. He scores like sixty every other day, but seventy one most since Kobe did it. So that's awesome. We had to shout him out before we got into the Browns, yeah. just because that. I mean, it was a historic night in Cleveland last night, and we don't have to talk about the Buckeyes. So I'll I'm, tell you oh. what. I tell you what, though, I'm proud of my Buckeyes. I'm probably yeah. played a very they played a good game. It's just at the end was and I and I don't know if there's many Georgia fans that are watching this, but you got to play our second string. By midway through that third quarter, you got to you were playing the Buckeye second string and we hung forty one on you. We you were, were using our conver- what, Hayden's what, a converted receiver? Yeah, at running uh, back? That Thomas kid teams, caught yeah. a touchdown pass and then had to go play kickoff team. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and he was playing receiver and running back. Well, I mean, we we didn't have wide receiver one, wide receiver two went out. We didn't have tight end one. We didn't have running back one. We didn't have running back two. I mean, we were playing with a second string offense by the end of that game, and we hung forty one on them. And C.J. Stroud, my locked up number one pick. 
That was the best game I've ever watched. I watched him throw for like 600 yards last year in the Rose Bowl. Mm-hmm. This was the best game he's ever played. He showed his dual threat ability that everyone wants to see coming yes. to the NFL now. I was like, well, we know you got legs. Can you use them? And man, he can. If he would if he would have run at opportune times like that his entire career, he would have won a Heisman at some point. Absolutely. There's no yeah. doubt in my mind he would have yeah. won a Heisman at some point. Um, and I think the Buckeyes never would have lost. Ah, yeah. I don't know why he was so tentative to do it until against georgia but i mean he he looked crazy good yep so um proud of the buckeyes you know the buckeyes should never be considered underdogs but when you're playing the defending champs and you you're missing essentially five key contributors on your offense i mean we did all we could yep so Now to the Browns, which is what we're all here for. So hopefully you guys are all uh, Cavs and Buckeyes fans. If not, eh, sorry, we're going to talk Browns now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So here we go. We're going to get into the Browns game. First half of the end of the first half of this game. I'm like, oh, I was starting to get worried. And then all of a sudden Deshaun Watson looked like Deshaun Watson. And we pull out a 24 10 win over the Washington commanders who came into this game, a playoff team and managed to get themselves eliminated because I don't want to say because they started Carson Wentz, but why did they start Carson Wentz? Yeah, if I'm why a, did they let him that. keep playing? I, I have I I have a lot of respect for Ron Rivera. Okay, I think he's a good football coach yeah. and just a good guy. Okay, but that's a fireable offense. The, I mean, you this guy Carson Wentz weren't they one in six? What, when he went out? When he went out. I don't remember exactly. I'm pretty sure they were one and Heineke six. Put, and then Heineke, Heineke went like six and one. Yeah, put him in. He's the reason they were a playoff team. And then yeah. because he had two turnovers against the number one defense in football who makes everybody look bad except for Jarrett Stidham. Uh, and then you bench him for the guy who had you at one and six. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't understand the decision. I know Taylor Heineke doesn't have the strongest arm. He isn't super tall, but the guy just comes in and competes. And the team was playing hard for him. So good good for the Browns. But if, I mean, Ron Rivera's got to be a little bit on the hot seat for that. That's a, and I know the fans, as soon as Carson Wentz threw a pick, he had more, he had the same amount of interceptions as completions at one point. Yes, he did. And the fans were letting him have it every single time yes they were and i mean you knew he knew you could see that he knew how bad he was playing whenever he scored that goal line touchdown jumping over the pile and his little celebration where he was like going crazy yeah like he knows he sucks ass right now <laughs> <laughs> like i needed this yeah they I were gonna, so bad somebody was gonna come out in here and drag me off the field pretty much pretty um, much and talk about a fall from grace for i mean a guy who before a knee injury was going to be the MVP of the league and now is just terrible. I know. And it's funny because yep. a lot of times, and I know you say it a lot and I always agree with you when you say it about like, Oh, this guy didn't suddenly forget how to play football. I feel like Carson Wentz might've forgotten how to play football over I, those years. I will say though, last year he actually played pretty decent with Frank Reich. It was okay. He, you know, I mean, he wasn't his MVP level, but he played 27 touchdowns, six or seven picks. I mean, he, he played pretty decent. And then the Colts, got rid of him for Matt Ryan and we saw how that worked out for it them. turned into Sam Ellinger real quick. Yep. yep. Uh, and then Nick Foles. And yeah. then back to Sam Ellinger. <laughs> I don't want to talk about like Nick Foles. Him. We don't talk about yeah. Nick Foles on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Although he might have done me a favor because then half my team was hurt and I would have got killed this week. In the, yeah, the, you would have had nobody. <laughs> so, um, but enough about the commanders. Let's talk about the Browns. You guys got to admit at the end of that first half, you were thinking, man, I was hoping by this point I'd start seeing something. Not necessarily only out of Watson, but out of Watson, the team, and Stefanski as one. I was starting to think, and I've been trying to be super patient, you know, hey, it's going to take time for him to learn Stefanski, Stefanski to learn him. And I'm watching, and at the end of that half, I'm going, this might not work. (laughs) I'm going, (laughs) he needs to be – more free it needs to be more open these receivers need to be working back to the ball i mean the first half he does an unbelievable scramble nobody's open on that scramble yeah they were getting covered you got covered for 28 seconds and and none of the offensive linemen held 
<laughs> it just the whole thing was mind blowing, and then he ends up having to dump it off to Jack Conklin. Yeah, and, and <laughs> Conklin, yeah, I'm just yeah. Conklin's like, D- I don't want anything to do with this. No, he just dropped it. <laughs> and, and I'm watching, and I'm going, this this offense might not be what suits him best. These receivers might not complement. And I'm just like, I was starting to get in. I don't want to say panic mode, but I was just like, man, this is this. I'm getting a little concerned. And then all of a sudden, second half comes yeah. out. And it was almost like Stefanski took the training wheels off and said, okay, you've played four games now. Let's just go. And he started calling some called runs. The read option where he runs up the middle for about 16, 17 yards was great. Um, it, it seemed to like kind of loosen him up. Then he starts moving a little bit. Then he starts delivering the ball, three straight touchdown drives. I think second half, 6 of 10, 147 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, 37 yards rushing, um, or 31 yards rushing. That that is the Deshaun Watson we traded for, and that was just one half of it. And you saw, and then the run game was so open too because of it. And it's just like it gave you hope. It was almost like when you go play a round of golf and you're complete ass for 17 holes, <laughs> and then you birdie the 18th, and you're like, "Let's make the turn again. Let's yeah. go." <laughs> That's how I felt watching this game. I watched uh-huh. the first half and I was like, "Oh my god, we suck." And then at the end of the second half, I was like, "Let's run it back. Let's yep. play a third yep. half. Let's go. <laughs> We're hot. We're hot." Um, but yeah. So w- w- what's the second half? What what you made you guys think? You guys positive outlook going forward? Was a flash in the pan? What do you think? Oh, I mean, I think you got to take it as a positive. A win is a win. As Browns fans, we love this. I mean, we we went through seasons where we get two wins. The thing, like you were saying with the first half, I think the thing that was even more frustrating is the defense is getting turnovers. We look at least like, you know, we can hold with them. And I'm not saying that they that Washington looked great or anything, but uh, the defense was playing well and creating turnovers and you know, other than a few Nick Chubb runs, we we look terrible. We look terrible on offense. I, I I will say this real quick. Part of the first half woes, which I didn't even realize, we only had the ball three times. Well, and that's what I was going to say is I I was tempering my frustrations at halftime because I kept going back to the stat they showed on the screen saying that they just had the, the commanders just had the ball for twenty two. Was it 22 yeah. plays, yeah. 96 yards, and almost yep. 12, 12 minutes, something like that? Yep. So essentially an entire quarter. So the Browns only played one quarter in the first half. Yep. So, you know, you look at the stats like, oh, we only threw for 169 yards, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, we only had what? Would you say three drives? I think we only had three drives. Like, we didn't get the ball. They, they just kept it. I mean, he only time. threw the ball 18 times for the game. Right. Ten yeah. of those were in the second half. Um, yeah. So I think he was three of eight in the first half. Yeah, for what twenty five yards? Yeah, in the first half, something like that. So I mean, I mean, you'd expect Deshaun to have fifteen, sixteen passes in the first half alone, double what he what he mm-hmm. was doing. We just didn't have the ball. We had, we've had a couple drops. I think receivers are still getting used to the ball he throws a little bit um, because you, we've seen the drops go up a little bit since Deshaun came back, especially in Joku. In Joku, yep. And that hadn't been a problem all year, and all of a sudden since Deshaun came back, he's he's dropped a few. So hopefully they can get that corrected. Um, and I'll say this, since Deshaun's come back, it's been a very rough time to try to get him acclimated to the offense. Obviously the Texans game was his first game back in 700 days. But then he played games in, in terrible weather. He played a game. I forget which one it was. It was another game where we never had the ball. Uh, what was the game before the Saints? The Ravens game, maybe, where like we turned the ball over. Oh, that was a high. Was a high win game too. And it was like crazy. And then we got a defensive score. Yeah, we got it. We we turned it over, but then we got a defensive score. And then I mean the the offense was on the field for like twenty minutes at one point. It's been very odd games to try yeah. to get him acclimated. There's been almost no games where there's any rhythm. No, and one big thing with athletes, too, is, you know, your confidence on the field, especially for Deshaun being away from the NFL field for 700 days, just getting back in that rhythm, thinking, like, okay, I can make this throw. I can, you know, take that hit. I can make that run, make that read. And like we've said before, he came in when everybody else is in midseason form, and he's in preseason. So I, I do think, and like, even our expectations, I think, were too high to, to begin with, to, to think of the hurdles he had to overcome because, I mean, these are all professional athletes on the defensive side of the ball that we're going up against, and they've been playing all year, and they're ready to go, and he's trying to get his his confidence back. Well, and I'll be the first. I completely underestimated 
the idea of game speed. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, this guy's been working out. He's yeah. been doing football things. He's young. He's you know he's still in shape. I didn't I didn't take into account one. He's learning a completely new, playing in a completely new offense, and he's trying to do that while everybody else is in midseason form, and he's he's trying to readjust a game speed. Completely underestimated that. Was that stupid? Did some people try to tell us that? Maybe we're fans. It's short for a fanatic. We're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But we underestimated it, it happens. Um, sure. But I think that half, it was one of the first halves for the Browns where you've seen them be able to settle in and get into a rhythm. We mm -hmm. converted third downs. We, we were able to stay on the field, and it was three straight touchdown drives. And I think you're seeing him and Cooper have a pretty good connection too. Yes. Um, and, and Amari Cooper continues to be um, like the, the ultimate steal. He had oh. a touchdown on 66.66% of his catches this game. He had yeah. three catches, and two of them were touchdowns, 105 yeah. yards. Did you see what he said? Was it the other day or after the game about his connection or whatever with Deshaun? Oh, we just lost a picture. That's okay. Oh. <laughs> Earthquake? I just about scared shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> this place is haunted. <laughs> it's the Holy Ghost. Um <laughs> No, but Amari Cooper said that, you know, during the offseason coming up, like he plans on working with Deshaun like constantly to, to yeah, you know, up that chemistry and get, get things rolling because, I mean, they look good out there together now. Yep. Which we knew they would because Amari Cooper's just that guy. Like he gets open. He's, you know, he was real quick to get it with J Jacoby. He went okay. into Dallas with Dak. Like how many games did he play that year with? He transformed Dak. Like he he didn't get traded before the season. Like he went midseason to Dallas and it was just like, boom. Yep. Cowboys yep. got something going here, and yeah. Um, so, how do you guys feel about the defense? We we did only give up ten points. We picked off Wentz three times, um, but we did give up a ninety-six yard, twenty-two play touchdown drive. And it's like to me, it's it's one of those things. We are just terrible on third down. Yeah, very we, bad. We are so it, third and third and fifteen. Mine's will be third and two. For for <laughs> teams playing against us, it just seems like we can never get off the field. They were seven of sixteen on third down, and then two of four on fourth down. And I think some of those seven of sixteen is not great. But I bet you, if you go back and look through the first half, they were like, I bet you, they were seven of nine. You know, uh, the second half, the defense really put the clamps on, started playing really well. Um, but I. Are we getting are we getting duped? We've talked about this. Are we getting duped into Joe Woods coming back next year? I I yes. don't think we are, but I, I think <laughs> yeah. maybe the organization could be. I'm I'm very worried about that, Justin. I agree. I agree for a few weeks. I think that it sucks because I think we're gonna go through this all again next year. We're gonna be halfway through the season. We're gonna be like the defense sucks. None of these guys look good. We're going to get ready to just turn the whole franchise over on defense. And then all of a sudden the play picks up. I, I, it's just not like sustainable. No, because like, you're eventually going to lose too many games that are important at the beginning. Like we did yep. this year. Yeah. And eventually it's just the same thing over and for three years now. This yeah. should make I mean, don't even Browns fans Go sick ahead. that, Almost every break we needed to happen happened. If if we had just won one of those games, we would be in the driver's seat to make the playoffs right now. Mm -hmm. If we beat the Saints, the this game against Pittsburgh would have been like a, a win in your end kind of thing. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and then imagine if we just go ahead and put away that two lead score or two score lead against the Jets. Yeah, with a minute and a half to go. Like that's all. I mean, it's just stupid stuff like that. Where it's of course. We blew it though. Well, and, and then not only is it's it's the lack of adjustments, and um, and then he comes out in a press conference and they're asking him about the slow, and it's like, oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, I, I thought we would play better. It's it's you know, I think it's more execution based, and I'm just like, bro, you sound dumb. Like it's just bad answers. Him, him and and uh, Howard, the last two weeks have just given not great answers at the podium in terms of trying to answer for some issues on the defensive end that make them look not smart. You know, that they're going to catch a lot of heat for the, the kind of answers they're giving. Um, my problem is it seems to be that his philosophy, like he, he wants to be a bend but don't break defense. 
And it, it, in a little bit in the defense, a lot of, a lot of defenses in the league, like there's only a few elite elite defenses. But I would say that nobody else's defensive strategy is to be like move the ball at will between the twenties. We'll, right. we'll 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 stop you. No, because then you're limiting yourself. We we suppose we have a high flying offense with Deshaun, and you're limiting possessions. We can't get into a rhythm because we only have the ball three times and a half. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like th- this is just the entire philosophy of the defense is I just can't get behind it. So I just, God, I'm so hopeful that that's not the case. We only ran 53 plays in this game because we only had the ball three times in the first half. We Basically only three quarters of, you know, potential play for us. Yeah. You would think I, you want to run upper 60. They ran 68. You want to run upper 60s into the 70s in plays. We the 20 plays. That's a couple drives potentially. Yeah. That's a couple possessions. So I just, I can't get behind the defensive strategy. I, I just hope that they're not looking at the, the second half of the season and seeing the points per game allowed and thinking, okay, that's, that's better. We've played some terrible offenses. Mm-hmm. We've played some horrible offenses. Yep. So I mean, we've had so- Ahead, we still can't. We still can't stop anybody running the ball. Right. Yeah. Like Robinson. I mean, don't get me wrong. He is a talented kid. He was kind of just running at will for six, seven, eight yards at a time, and I'm just like, oh man, uh, like don't get me wrong. Good kid. He's really good, <laughs> but it's the same thing every week. You see a running back just completely destroy us. We're so weak up front. Oh, it's bad. Pathetic. In the middle. This episode is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. The fans, the tradition, the glory. There's nothing more thrilling than college football, and it all comes down to the national championship game happening on Monday. We got Georgia. We got TCU. We do, unfortunately, not have Ohio State because that was what in the world was that field goal attempt. But anyway, I don't know, guys. I think that uh, either one of these teams can pull this out. I think it's going to be a good game, but I think TCU's on a little bit of a hot streak right now, but we'll see what happens. Don't find yourself a field goal short, just like the Buckeyes. My go-to for betting is DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 on college football and get $200 in free bets instantly, win or lose. Plus, Everyone can combine multiple bets for a bigger payout with DraftKings Same Game Parlays. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use code TPPN, new customers bet just $5 on college football and get $200 in free bets instantly. That's code TPPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Christmas is over, but if you missed the opportunity to give the gift of Omaha Steaks to somebody you love, or if they didn't give you the gift of Omaha Steaks, it's all good. Right now, you can take advantage of Omaha Steaks end of season sale, 50% off site wide. Plus, if you use promo code DOGS, D A W G S, at checkout, you'll get an additional $30 off your order. So if Santa Claus did you dirty this Christmas, send yourself an assortment of mouth watering favorites guaranteed to just melt your taste buds like the legendary. Butcher's Cut Filet Mignon, air-chilled boneless chicken, ultra-juicy steak burgers, and even easy-to-prepare comfort meals that are ready in a flash. Don't forget to throw in an order of the caramel apple tartlets for dessert. Those things are absolutely amazing. So don't get too down in the end of Christmas blues. Give yourself the gift of a new year with Omaha Steaks. Right now, end of season sale, 50% off, site-wide, and make sure when you go and you place your order, use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out. Get that extra $30 off your order and ring in the new year in delicious style. Uh, I think we should spotlight one guy, though. Well, maybe two guys. I think Miles had one and a half sacks. They put him in, so now he's one sack away from tying his uh, franchise record he set last year was 16. So if he can get uh, at least one sack, he'll tie his record. If he can get two sacks against Pittsburgh, he will break his own record. So that's pretty cool. Um, And I think Miles, minus the car wreck, I mean, he would have – that obviously sent him back a few weeks. He was banged up. If he doesn't get in that Mm -hmm. car wreck this year, I mean, he might be pushing 20 in terms of sacks. You're right. Um so, so that's a little disheartening, but I think he's played really well the further we've gotten away from that car accident as he's gotten healthier. Yeah. And then Grand Delpit has been playing very well lately. And it just, every yeah. time, I just keep thinking, how good could this guy be 
with a real life yeah. defensive coordinator who's going to put him in position to succeed and utilize his strengths because we're starting to see like 2018 LSU Grand Delpit. Well, and this this just is the the theme that we've been talking about all season and pretty much this whole show so far is how our defense and that is the defense and uh, as a whole and all those great names that we talk about on that roster for the first whatever three fourths of the season trash. Then all of a sudden, oh, they put together and now they're playing really good. And then you see these guys, Denzel Ward's popping off, having interceptions, making big plays. Grant Delpit looks great. I mean, we got guys out there tackling. Miles Garrett's, you know, popping off the screen and things. But it's not enough. That needs to happen all year, you know. And you, we talk about you know these elite defenses in the NFL. I mean, I think we can all agree that the 49ers this year are probably the the number one defense in the league. Absolutely. But even they just got carved never, up by Jared Stidham. And then I you think. think uh, Philly too. Throw yeah, Philly in there. I was just going to say, you think about Philly and Dallas, but even they just had their own shootout against each other where both defenses couldn't stop each other. So these things happen during the year where your defense just, for whatever reason, that that Sunday can't stop the other team and, and it's a high-scoring game. But overall, you want to see your defense you know, shut other teams down. Not The Browns are the opposite, where it's like they just pile up on us all year and then there's a couple games where we look pretty good. That's not I think- good enough. I think it's crazy too. Like you look at, I think that the defense has looked great since the Tampa Bay game. I think yes. when that was the first game where I was like, okay, and then you think about it. So those games that the defensive look good, Tampa Bay, they're, they're not that good. I mean, apparently they, you know, somebody needs to cover Mike Evans. But other than that, <laughs> they're, they haven't been that good. They have been a bad offensive team. Houston, terrible offense. Yep. Cincinnati, they're pretty good. I mean, we're, we'll give them that. But then Baltimore, no Lamar, New Orleans, crappy weather game, and then Washington this weekend. Ugh. Against Carson Wentz. Not, You're right. Yeah, not very good as far as, like, offense. So how good is the defense, really? Or are we just getting – are we getting tricked? We're getting tricked. I, I, I absolutely yes. getting tricked. And, and we're not trying to we're not trying to be uh, negative after a win. So I hope people are jumping no. on us in the comments. We're we're happy with the win, but one there's not we're not we're playing for nothing right now. So we're you know we're kind of talking about all things, and I think it's a relevant topic of conversation because you're starting to see people say like all the defense has been playing better is Joe Woods going to come back and it's like I kind of want to do a deep dive if I ever get free time in my life again um, which I probably won't for like 17 and a half more years Uh, (laughs) but um, I would like to go in and do look at like some of the next level stats like are we getting off the ball on third down? I'd say probably not. Um, you know, like yards per rushing game, we're giving up time of possession, all this kind. Because of, I, I would bet the points per game has come down, but I bet you if you would look at some of these next level stats, we're still not great. Right, we're still middle of the pack or worse in a lot of these categories. That's just a guess. I am, you know, I'll let you know in seventeen this, or eighteen. This years. thing with Joe Woods and the defense is like when you know you got that girlfriend that's like she's just she just keeps cheating on you. And, you know, she's cheating on you, and you're like, man, I wish you would stop doing that. I got to get a new girlfriend. And then she's like, I love you. It's just you. And then she meets and then, you and you're like, cheesecake factory. Okay, now I believe you. You know, and it's you get tricked. Yeah, no, nah, man. Don't get tricked. Nah. Don't get tricked by Joe Woods in this defense. It is not real. We need a new coordinator in a bad way. Yep. But I think we can, if we focus on this offense, um, Deshaun Watson, then do you want to continue to see these? designed quarterback runs or does it make you nervous always makes me nervous when i see the quarterback running on purpose <laughs> yeah but i think it's such an important part of his game it is so uh I'm, I'm i'm excited about that and i think nick chubb i know he was out of it potentially for um leading rusher in the league but he had another super solid game and josh jacobs did not right in my correct in that i thought he uh i thought he had a 20 spot if you had a 20 point game in fantasy or 19 so okay i, I thought he had a low game rushing but maybe i was so nick chubb had 104 yards he averaged 7.4 yards per carry i'll tell you yeah 69 nice um cream hunt two carries zero yards is yeah. there a reason he is the reason he's not getting run is because are they seeing in practice like he doesn't have it because he he has been very. It's been disappointing, and it's, it's. I don't like to say it because I I really like the guy and I like what he's done in Cleveland, but 
it's noticeably different when he's in there compared to Chubb this year. Noticeably different. And I, Jerome Ford might have more pop than him. You see Jerome Ford on these yeah. kickoff returns. He looks explosive. Kareem Hunt just seems like he can't get the edge anymore. On they, A lot of times with Kareem, they run those out of shotgun, like those stretch sweep plays, and he used to get the edge and make a cut. It's like he can't get that edge anymore. I don't I don't know, but he is – he has not looked great this year, and for him to only get two carries and he had zero yards, that's not a Kareem Hunt stat line. And he had um, one catch for negative one yards. So Kareem Hunt was minus one for the day. That is crazy. A day in which Nick Chubb averaged 7.4, and in the second half we were pretty much doing whatever we wanted on offense. And Kareem Hunt couldn't muster zero yards. He had negative. This could just be like a – probably a weird conspiracy fan theory or whatever but is there any way that we're not giving him a lot of run to try to drive down his value to maybe be able to get him to sign back with us i don't think there's any conspiracy (laughs) conspiracy i don't think i don't think um i don't think we'd want him back i think we drafted jerome ford for a reason jerome ford looked good I mean, he had five carries for nine yards but he's looked explosive since he's that's what i meant the explosion yeah um on kickoff returns uh, I almost forgot we have a couple of voicemails. So we're sitting here talking about this whole game and we do have a couple of voicemails. So why don't we go ahead and jump into these real quick? Um, cause we like getting them from you guys. <laughs> All right. Here's the first yes. one's from Phil. Hey guys, it's Phil. So, uh, surprising turn of events in that second half because the first half looked God awful. And then they decided to pull their heads out of their butts and actually, uh, run some offense. Actually, made some good plays. So I was happy to see that. I've been waiting to see the potential that we have with Sean Watson. And I think we finally saw it in that second half. I'm just worried that they're not going to fire Joe Woods because the defense is playing better. I mean, Grant Delph, it's balling out. That dude should be a pro bowler. It's probably just, he's been, obviously they've already voted, but he's really, he's probably our best defender. We'll see what they do in the off season. I really hope Joe Woods gets fired because I think that's going to hold this team back. It really is because he he just sucks at his job. So let me know what you guys think. We'll hope we can beat the Steelers. I'd love to knock them out of the playoffs. So somehow they're still in it. All right, y'all take care. Well, Phil, I'm really sorry that we completely covered everything you were going to talk about in your voicemail uh, <laughs> before we played it. I, I just, for some reason, I just started talking about the game, and then it was like, oh, shit, we have voicemails to get to. Um, but, no, we kind of already talked about the Joe Woods thing. Um, it seems to kind of be a concern, obviously. So it wasn't just us who was concerned about that. Um, it, it's other people watching the game. Uh, yeah, I just, I just hope Kevin's got the cojones to, to do what needs done. And on, it's the questionable. Defense, on the defensive side and in the special teams, because even though we made all our kicks <laughs> or whatever, Mike Preford's still not off the hook. No. It's been too many years. Special teams isn't just making field goals. No. <laughs> it, it goes into a lot. Um, it was cool, though. D'Anthony Bell got some run on defense. So yeah, I love cool. seeing him in there. You guys are watching. That. Yep. Um, so we got another voicemail? We do. Hang on. I brought Justin back on the screen too soon. <laughs> well. All right. We got... Brown Tiger. Hey guys, this is the Brown Tiger. What a it looked like a shaky start from Watson. Um, sure, all the doubters they don't like the trade for Watson would say, "Oh, he's not the quarterback we should have gotten," and yada yada yada. But for all those doubters, did you watch the second half of the game? For the first time, I can honestly say that they actually adjusted some after the half. Um, was not was not surprised was actually really surprised that that we adjusted as much as we did. The defense started uh, started playing better in the second half and adjusted uh, Woods uh, adjusted his defense. It was something we don't ever hear. Um, but what an absolute three touchdown game from Watson! Wow, what a game! And then all the runs that he had with his legs. Oh wow. Um, I'm, I'm beginning to see why I really loved Watson at the beginning, and I still love Watson as our quarterback now. Go Browns! What a win! Yep. Well, thank you for the voicemail, as always, Brown Tiger. Yeah. Uh, but no, I think I think the second half was incredibly encouraging to see. If if the second half would have looked like the first half, ugh, this would have been a, a lot more of a somber episode because. Um, <sighs> It was I was I was starting to get concerned. <laughs> like I was like legitimately going, Oh, dang. 
Um, a lot of people, I, I do want to address this. A lot of people, every time he makes this, we're paying 230, we're not paying 230 million. <laughs> I don't understand why all these, uh, why everyone who's like th- was anti the trade and stuff. The one of the first things they talk about is the money he's making. You're not paying him. Why? I, I don't care how much, I don't care if they paid him 800 million. We're not paying him. They'll make it work in the books. I mean, I, what are you talking about? We're no, no, they're paying him 230 million. <laughs> I don't see your names on any of those checks. So I don't care how much any no. of them make that make it work in the books, which they will. It's fine. Who cares? Like I, I that's unbelievable to me. Like, Oh, we're, we're paying him 230 million. Oh, I didn't know that you were putting your name yeah. on that dotted line on his paychecks. Um, but no. ESPN, uh, ESPN radio was talking about that earlier and they were like, do you think that the owners are going to lower ticket prices if they get a deal on a salary? Like <laughs> yeah. no. they're not discounting your gear on NFL shop.com because you guys executed a great, great, you know, salary and everything. It's not, who cares? Jimmy and D got it. Spend it. Yeah. You can't take it with you. All no. of it. Well, <laughs> yeah. if, if, for, if, if people don't like Watson, please just take it. Take 30 minutes, go go watch highlights of Cody Kessler, Deshaun Kaiser. <laughs> you know, go 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 watch Baker Mayfield. And then just just spend 15 of those minutes watching highlights of Deshaun Watson in Houston. My favorite thing is people trying to say, like, look at Baker now that he's in L.A. Baker has four touchdown passes in four games with L.A., and Deshaun has three touchdown passes in one half. So, like... That there's the difference, and also Baker's in his element right now because he's playing with nothing to lose. Correct, he's house money. He he doesn't care. There's no there's expect, free. There's, there's no number one receiver on that team right now. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> let's see how he looks when Cooper Cup comes back. They'd have their Rams fans would be screaming, "We got to get rid of Cooper Cup so Baker can play well." <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like, and and I, and I love everybody who tries to throw something about Baker in our face. Just completely forgets that he was the worst quarterback in the league on the other team he was on this year. Right. <laughs> like, oh, look how good he's doing for L.A. How good he's doing is just, like, serviceable. Yeah. He's had, like, one good game, you know, and, and they've played nobody. Oakland sucks. Denver gave up so they could fire their coach. Right. You know how, like, <laughs> they played Green Bay, and he was just blah, and that's it. Um so yeah, so that's that's pretty much the game. I, I'm very much looking forward to the uh, the Steelers matchup. I know we beat them the first time, but they had no TJ Watt. We're going to do a preview of that Steelers game, but um, the Browns still have a lot to play for, I think. So I'm I'm excited that we were able to get this win. If we can close out the season on a win, nobody says we're happy with eight and nine. So don't you know? Don't be like this season was supposed to be better. We we understand. We we wished it would have been better, but to get eight wins with the way this thing started giving up leads to the jets mm-hmm. and stuff like that to, to pull away, to see uh, Deshaun go, it would be what four and two to close out the season. Yeah. If we beat the Pittsburgh, that's encouraging. Well, and the important thing to remember is the, the reason that if we, if we beat Pittsburgh and we go eight and nine or whatever, the reason our record is not what we wanted to be is not because we traded for Deshaun Watson. Correct. It's because our defense was garbage this year. It's because Joe Woods sucks. <laughs> That's why our record is what it is. Jacoby Brissett, we've talked about this a million times. Hats off to Jacoby. I mean, he did. He went above and beyond for this offense, for this team this year. I mean, he he played. We were just hoping he could hold down the fort, and instead he led the charge. I mean, he was the man, but the defense just... Let us down. The the Jets game will forever be one of the oh. worst collapses ever. Um, <laughs> that was a fireball fence, just that one game. Yep. Uh, but I don't want to just continue just like talking circles about the game. I think uh, we pretty much covered everything. We appreciate you guys' voicemails. Before we do get out of here, though, I just wanted to make fun of the Ravens real quick. <laughs> uh, and Aaron oh. Butler for losing to Pittsburgh. And if you guys, when you guys lose to the Bengals next week, if we beat Pittsburgh, you will have only two more wins than us. We played 11 games without our starting quarterback, and we split the season with you once we got our starting quarterback. So congrats on your just so much better season than us. And it should have been a sweep. Yeah. Yeah. So you're see, Ravens, you guys are <laughs> on the brink of a rebuild. Of a rebuild. They're going to have to tear it down. Yes. Your defense is, I'll get give you this right now, your defense is stellar. It'll keep you in games. Your offense will win you none. 
<laughs> I don't care who's playing quarterback. It's awful. It's pitiful. So you just lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers um, in a game where you they had no business winning. I know you're playing with Huntley, but don't tell me he's the issue because Lamar wasn't scoring any points either uh, last two weeks before he went out, I'm pretty sure. So ha, 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 ha. Ha ha ha! You guys suck. <laughs> I will forever make fun of you. Oh my god! Um, so congratulations, and I know they'll hear it because most Browns fans don't even listen to our whole episodes. But I know he's going to listen to the whole episode. So that's why that's why I put it at the end. You go yep. the whole episode, and then I'll, and then you can hear this. You guys are not good. Congrats! You clinched your playoff spot with two more wins than us, probably, um, because I have a feeling you're going to get shellacked by the Bengals. That'll be a, or the, their playoff game will be one you can probably turn off early yes sports betting's legal in ohio I'm watching the whole thing yeah <laughs> watching the whole thing yep so the whole I, thing i just wanted to get that out of my system before we wrap this up it was i'd never been a bigger pittsburgh steelers fan than i was that night and it was wonderful uh <laughs> losing at home to pittsburgh to kenny pickett so just wonderful uh with that being said we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up we appreciate all you guys being here uh one more game to go in this season hang tough with us we hope we will see you guys back next week to all the dog pack members we will see you guys on the after hours episode to everybody else hopefully talking about finishing the season on a high note another good game from deshaun and pushing the steelers out of the playoffs uh so we'll see you guys well i guess thursday and then we'll talk about that student swing. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at the Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.